in this week's video, we are celebrating reaching 500 subscribers by drawing all of your superhero slash supervillain character design submissions. All right, super friends, let's make something awesome. Hello, super friends, and welcome back to another episode of Superhero Saturday, where we talk about the arts of superheroes, storytelling, and so much more. My name is Annie, and I'm so excited we finally reached the 500 subscriber threshold. Woo! Oh yeah, oh yeah, dancing, dancing. As you guys might remember, if you saw the episode just a few weeks ago, I wanted to do a little celebration video for reaching this threshold. So I asked for you guys to submit your own ideas for superhero or supervillain concepts. And you guys totally came through. I got 10 amazing submissions and I decided to draw all of them this week as soon as I saw that we were like right there at the margin. And yeah, my, my, my wrist hurts from, from drawing so much. But it was all worth it because these concepts came together so cool. As you guys know, creating superhero concept designs are like, oh, it's like my favorite thing in the world to do. And your ideas that you guys submitted were so awesome. I totally ran with them and created a bunch of really cool designs. So in this video, we're just gonna go ahead and clip on through and show you guys all of the designs that we came up with together. And before we get into the actual drawing and uh, guest digital gallery version. I just want to say thank you to everyone who has supported the channel so far. This would not have been possible without you guys because I would just feel like I was, you know, screaming into the void without people to talk to. And I love the little community that's been forming and I'm so excited for all of the new subscribers who have joined our team. So thank you once again for joining the Superhero Saturday team and here's to getting 500 more. To recap, the superhero slash supervillain character design submissions followed the same three item formula. A super character name, the color scheme for the character, and the character's power sets. Sometimes they were just really bare bones submissions, which allowed me to be very creative, and other times it seemed like there, were a f there was a fully fleshed out character right there waiting to jump off the page. So with all that out of the way, let's get into our virtual gallery of our superhero slash supervillain concept design drawings. I actually printed them out and put them on and four pages worth of submissions here. So let's get started with number one. Our first character design submission is actually also the first super villain submission. And it's brought to us by user Alexander Usuri. Sorry if ahead of time, if I mispronounce any of these usernames. The villain's name is Monster Lord. His colors are gray, black, and red. And he can turn any living thing around him, except humans, into terrifying monsters. For example, plants or inanimate objects or chairs or cars or what have you. This character also has extremely pointed teeth and a huge evil monster next to him at all times. And because of his teeth, he actually can't speak because he accidentally bit his tongue off. Ouch. I actually thought this design was really interesting. So I kind of saw it as like being horror influenced and supernatural just a little bit. So I gave the character basically civilian style clothes, but you can clearly see his teeth and drool coming out. And then the giant eagle monster in the back, which actually really works well because I don't particularly like birds. They're pretty from far away. And I like the concept of flying, you know, aesthetically, but up close, birds are gross, dirty, crazy monsters. You should see some of the wild turkeys that come around my house. Scary. And I think it came out really cool. I think this character would fit really well as a mysterious supervillain in one of a, sto a short story that has a little bit of a horror supernatural tilt in it. This was the first time I actually asked for submissions that could include supervillains. So thank you so much, Alexander, for contributing to that new area of character design. Our next character design is brought to us by Odrin's Art and is a character named Bulletproof, whose colors are green and orange. His powers include flight, super strength, energy blaster eyes, and a healing factor. They wanted to also put in one weakness, which is Alcaric, which is a special kind of red energy you say in an alien language that will allow it to shapeshift into any weapon. Cool character design. There definitely sounds like a backstory in there for the world building aspect of this story. But since I don't have all of that information, I just went ahead and drew this super strong, super tough character flying through the air and bullets flying at him and he's just 
too busy focused on shooting his bright neon green lasers in front of him. Nothing stopping him. He's bulletproof. I feel like most laser beams are generally depicted as being red, but since the character's colors were green and orange, and I remember my brother used to have this really cool bright green laser, I thought I would try to go for that color. Although I think I could have colored it a little better to get that across. It still totally works. You can see the beams coming out of his eyes and the bullets bouncing off his chest. And I think it came out really awesome. So thank you so much, Odrin's Art, for contributing your submission. The next character design is brought to us by Linzo. I'm guessing. This super friend is pulling this character from their own story, and the character's name is the Queen of the Light, who is a female superhero with pink and yellow as her colors. Her powers are many and varied, including supersonic screeching, the ability to change her voice to sound like anyone, to sing with a huge range and perfect pitch, and enhanced hearing. All of these kind of focused on the realm of sound and hearing and voice and those kind of things, which is super cool because you don't get to see that very often. She also has a series of light powers, which include sheeting beams of light from her hands, redirecting light waves, super speed, and a special ability called photocopy, where she can make a light clone of herself to attack and fight someone like she's seen before. She also has a power called light space that allows her to distort time so she can move at almost light speed but whatever damage she takes in that mode is doubled. This is always fun because you guys know, I always say you wanna build in some kind of weakness into your characters. So good job making that part of your description. Since this superpower has so much to do with the voice, I decided to draw the Queen of the Light with her powers activated while she's singing. And she's also got her hand up to shield the different light beams and sound waves coming at her because essentially, some theorists say that light and sound are the same kind of motion of particles, maybe? So it kind of makes sense that all of these fit into her power set. But I also included copies of her in the background and just, you know, copying and pasting and moving and changing the opacity down a little bit to give that impression of being kind of not as real as the real thing, but maybe even in the process of being generated by the Queen of the Light. Her eyes are also supposed to glow pink when she's using her powers, so I went ahead and did that and gave her a regular superhero domino mask in the color yellow to offset that pink and yellow color scheme. Great character design, super friend. I can't wait to see what she turns out to be in your story. Our next character submission is named Dragoon and is brought to us by Squirmy Trickster. The colors for this character are green and light gray and the powers include super strength, super durability slash bulletproof skin, and not forever immortality, good caveat. And this character also has robotic wings similar to the Falcon and wristbands that shoot fire, which totally pulls into the dragon-ish type vibes of this character. So I decided to go with kind of a classic the Falcon type pose with the wings outspread and the fire shooting out of the, the gauntlets and it just looks really dramatic and powerful. And I had a lot of fun trying to design the wings. I will say that I don't have a lot of practice at drawing wings, but I tried to give it kind of a robotic type vibe that it was made out of some kind of metal and really incorporated that green and gray color scheme in there with a little bit of variation in the green tones, like all the way up to yellow and some down to like forest green. There was no mention if this character was a super villain or a superhero, so I think this character might be one of those really cool kind of ambiguous characters that kind of fights for what he needs, but mm, that might not always be on the side of objective goodness. Thank you for your submission, Squirmy Trickster. I think this was a totally cool character design and I absolutely had a great time doing it. I had a ton of fun with our next submission, which totally went off the rails on the kind of silly and obscure type character that maybe isn't the most iconic, like powerful, like Superman or Batman type character, but is definitely one that is worth remembering. And that is the Indomitable Mansloth. This submission is brought to us by David Galloway and the Indomitable Mansloth has a color scheme of mustard, sage green, and forest green, and he can turn into a sloth on command. He is actually, in fact, a sloth that was bitten by a radioactive man and gained all the abilities of a man. In the description for this character's costume, uh, David describes a tight-fitting suit that has free hands so that he can turn them into sloth claws, and also specialized goggles to make up for his naturally poor eyesight. David also mentions that the man sloth tends to operate in the shadows, picking locks and pockets to get by. 
So I kind of thought of this as kind of like one of those minor characters that comes in for an episode or two, but maybe is just more of uh, someone trying to get by, but is definitely not an ordinary human. I mean, obviously he's a sloth. I thought the idea was hilariously awesome, and I loved the fact that um, there was thought put into the claws and also the eyesight, because that sounds like, I, I did a little bit of research, I didn't do a lot of research, but it sounds like something that is related to actual biology, which I always love a little bit of reality and educational aspect in a superhero, so that was totally cool. I also drew a sloth next to the man sloth, so you have the man sloth sloth and then the sloth man sloth next to each other just because I wanted to draw them together so you could see the transformation between the costume from man to sloth and back. And just a little bit of light and shadow on the ground to kind of show that he's kind of sneaking by on the outside very slowly. Thank you so much for sharing your idea with us, David, and I hope you enjoy my version of the indomitable man sloth. Next, we have a creative and open yet specific character design concept submission by EJ Reynolds 07. This superhero's name is Hydro, and the main colors are this kind of teal, dark blue color and this kind of brownish terracotta one. So for this design, I really wanted to emphasize his special abilities, which are the underwater breathing and sight and the ability to make air act like water so he can swim through the air just as much as he can swim through the ocean. So I wanted to get a far away shot and I wasn't able to get the yellow eyes so much. So I decided to give him a yellow mask and kind of demonstrate that yellow eye kind of concept. I think this would be really cool because you could just kind of wiggle your way up and out of the water like you could breach, wing, 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 and then through the air. Sounds like fun to me. I also really appreciated the specificity of colors on this one because I got hexadecimal codes for the exact shade that I was supposed to use. And the colors actually work really well together and are pretty unique. The blue makes total sense in an aquatic themed superhero, but the brown was kind of an interesting contrast and I really liked the combination together. So thank you so much for your submission, super friend, and I hope you like my version of Hydro. Now, I'm not supposed to pick favorites, I will say that, but this next one kind of ended up being one of my favorite designs out of the submissions, just because of the way that it turned out in the end. Thank you so much to Lego Sam 321 exclamation point, or should I say, Lego Sam 321! This character design is named Power Blast, and his colors are blue and white with orange accents. Love the clean look, by the way. Absolutely beautiful. His powers include energy blasts, flight, and super strength, which is given to him by technology. And the added bonus was a note about this character's personality. This character was a high school bully who got superpowers and wants to be a superhero, even though they do bad guy stuff like ignoring public property, getting upset easy, not asking for help, etc. I kind of really enjoyed the high school bully type concept, so I decided to give this character kind of like a smirking grin and like, flying off into the sunset with his arms crossed like, look at how cool I am, yeah. Plus the concept of having superpowers given to him by technology kind of led me to think that since he wants to be a superhero so badly, maybe he would go for kind of a classic look. So I gave him a cape, which I normally don't do, and also a little bit of technological looking lines on his blue part of the suit with the orange accent color, just to kind of give it the vibe of this suit is actually made out of technology and is very utilitarian in giving him the power to fight crime and maybe make a menace of himself also. And I think I just really ended up getting into a groove after how many submissions? This is number seven. After so many drawings in the same square and the same style, I thought I really was able to get a good um, quick style because drawing all of these, it took a, a really long time giving like half an hour at least to each character design concept and 10 of them. So that's 300 minutes. Like, oh my gosh, whew. I really got a good feel for both the tools that I was using and the style that I was going for. That quick, gritty, kind of basic, without too much background information, just a quick snapshot of the character kind of in action. And I think that by this point, I was really getting into that groove and then having this cool backstory for this character was able to give me just a little bit more inspiration to kind of solidify this character design. So thank you so much, Lego Sam 321 for submitting this and I hope you really like your character. Our eighth character design submission is brought to us by the Satanic Static 1018, who brings us the Yellow Jacket. 
His colors are matte black and neon yellow, and he has a ton of descriptions for the different types of B-based powers that this character has. These powers include force field manipulation, strength, speed, endurance, agility, and a whole host of B-related content, including lunglessness and beeswax manipulation, plus the ability to call up a whole army of bees and use bee lightning and honey control and flight and all sorts of cool things. I think one of the coolest aspects of this character design for me was the cyborg element of the character design. For example, it says that his left arm and both legs are robotic. So I totally wanted to dive into that and get into the post-apocalyptic cyberpunk kind of technology sense to this superhero character. There's also a lot of description in this character design concept that includes a bunch of weaknesses for using this type of power. Like if he uses this power too long, then it actually shortens his life and all sorts of cool things. You can check it out in the comments on that previous video for yourself if you wanna see a little bit more about the history of this character. Again, by this time, I think I was really getting into a groove with my drawing software and my wrist was probably pretty warmed up by then. So I really like the way that this character design came out. And I kind of saw the Yellow Jacket as a character that's in this post-apocalyptic type world and trying to fight for the good things, but also just trying to survive in a crazy world. So I had a lot of fun with this character design. Thank you so much for submitting it and I hope you enjoyed it. All right, our penultimate submission is brought to us by Crimson Nova, and the character design is Hyper Hummingbird, who is a superhero. Her colors are flamingo pink, periwinkle, and white. I don't know why, but I just really like having white or black as being one of their like almost primary secondary colors or whatever. It just makes it look extra clean to me. Her powers are shrinking, supersonic speed, energy stingers, sonic waves, and flight. And her full access of powers only are available when she shrinks down to her tiny form, which is super cool. I like that boundary. Since this was a female superhero character with the color pink in her color scheme, I decided to go a little bit extra feminine with this design and gave her a bit of a tutu and leggings and little frills on the side and little wings. There was no mention of the wings in the description, but I thought that it just kind of would go with the vibe. So maybe they're not actually functional wings, but more decorative. And then for a little bit of extra reference, since she is so tiny in size, I decided to draw some really big tables and chairs and paper and pencil next to her so we can see just how small she is when she is fighting crime. And then I gave her orange hair because I thought it would look really bad next to the pink, but I had this idea in my head that she actually really likes pink. And it doesn't really matter if it doesn't match with your hair color. It, it just matters if you like the color. So I thought that that would be kind of a cool juxtaposition and contrast with the rest of her costume. And I actually had a really fun time drawing a little tiny superhero next to these big, giant, ordinary objects. So thank you so much for your submission, Crimson Nova. I hope you enjoy this character. All right, we are down to the very last character design concept, so here we go. This final character design is brought to us by Grizzly Ryan, and his name is Plasmat. The colors are cerulean and black, and the powers are plasma rays similar to Godzilla's atomic breath. Ooh, super cool. Invincibility, flight by shooting plasma into the ground, strength, and super reflexes. In the design description, there is an extra note that he wears a cerulean hood and a mask that covers his whole face that is glowing. Because of the black and blue combination, I kind of thought that maybe this is one of those superhero characters that is, again, kind of a neutral character who is a little bit on the shadows, has a little bit of a dark past. So I kind of decided to go in with it and give him the full hoodie, the full face mask that glows, and the baggy pants, and then those like ninja style hand wraps and feet wraps to kind of protect him when he's using his super strength. Plus, I love the plasma and plasmat kind of together. That makes a really cool, catchy, and understandable nickname for this character. And I kind of just like the vibe of just having this kind of one set energy blast type power tie together in with the flight because while his powers may not actually be flight, it does have kind of that boundary of having to be manipulated by his other powers. So I thought that was really cool and creative. I also tried to do a little bit of extra glowiness. I don't know if it all worked, but I definitely had fun experimenting with it. So thank you so much, Grizzly Ryan, for submitting this character design, and I hope it meets up with your idea. And there you have it, super friends, one whirlwind of a gallery of all of 10 of these different character design submissions. 
I hope you guys really enjoyed watching this. I actually had a lot of fun doing it. It was a whole lot of drawing this week. Like I said, 300 minutes or more, probably more. And uh, trying to cram this all into one week was kind of not the best idea. I probably should have gotten started earlier. But that's okay because I was so excited to see our subscribers hit that 500 mark that totally gave me energy to do the whole thing. Plus it gave me a chance to kind of really get acquainted with my drawing software in a way that I just haven't put in the time yet. So thank you guys so much for joining with me on this cool little creative endeavor. And I hope you had at least as much fun as I did. And one last thank you again, even though I can't stop thanking you, for subscribing to the channel and getting us to that 500 subscriber mark. I'm so excited for all the content that we've gotten so far, all the new videos that I've been able to come up with and kind of get into a groove of talking about superheroes and art and all of this kind of stuff. And I just can't wait to see what else we do next. If you did like this video, go ahead and give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you wanna see even more awesome superheroic content every single Saturday. You can join the team by hitting that subscribe button or by following us on social media or by supporting us over on Patreon. If you want to see my own original superhero characters in action that weren't randomly generated or team generated, uh, you can go over to our website at www.fearless9.com and pick up some books that might just contain your new favorite superhero characters, if they're not one of the ones that we already just did. <laughs> Thanks again for watching Super Friends and we'll see you next week.